Uh, happy New Year and welcome to this first 2015 edition of the TCIPG seminar series on technologies for a resilient power grid. Uh, class isn't in session at Illinois yet, but I'm glad to see we've got a really good turnout of people here in the local audience, and I'm sure we have uh, a good turnout of people online as well. I'm really pleased today uh, to say that we have our own Professor Clara Narstadt uh, from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign here as our speaker today. Clara is a longtime professor of computer science here at the University of Illinois, and for the last year and a half, she's been the interim director of the Coordinated Science Lab. Coordinated Science Lab is a more than 60-year-old interdisciplinary lab uh, looking at large system issues of which uh, our Information <coughs> Trust Institute is affiliated with, and she's been the leader of that. Um, I could go on and, and read about her many, many awards, uh, but I think I'll give all the time to her um, and she's going to talk about electric vehicles and their impact on trustworthy power grid informatics. So thank you very much, Claire. We're glad to have you. Thank you very much, Bill, for the introduction. <clears throat> so uh, Happy New Year, 2015. And um, what I want to talk to you about uh, today is um, uh, some sort of thoughts uh, that uh, I have on electric vehicles. We have done some research on it, but I had actually attended, uh, we, have a, we had a paper on IEEE International Conference on uh, Electric Vehicles 2014 in uh, December in Florence. And uh, it was my first time at the conference on electrical vehicles. And uh, it was just fascinating to me what type of problems uh, that particular community currently is truly uh, looking for what are they planning for. The planning is 2050. It's not 2020, 2025, as I currently see in computer science, it's 2050. And so I actually, rather than talking deep about some research, I really want to actually share with you some of the uh, excitement, I think, that was at that conference and some of the issues, challenges, that researchers actually pointed out uh, uh, in terms of electrical vehicles and other stakeholders that are surrounding electrical vehicles and power grid and smart grid being one of them. And I basically then tried to map actually some of the issues that the community there was talking about into the power grid informatics that actually currently we are looking at, and particularly some of the trust issues. So it's going to be quite high level. I thought that it more appropriate. I want to really engage in discussion um, and um, uh, just want to let you know what currently is buzzing. So um, I want to give you some motivation for the electrical vehicles, uh, but then actually I want to talk about some of the challenges that the community is talking about in terms of electrical vehicles, particularly having discussed at the really most recent conference, Algebraic Conference on Electrical Vehicle. Wireless charging is a big issue. Electrification of roads, uh, batteries um, uh, are and standards are being currently very much discussed. And then actually there were several sessions um, that also talked about smart grid and electrical vehicle, smart grid and ITC, NNN. So, um, so a lot of very interesting sort of uh, sessions. If any of you are interested in some of the details that I'm sort of just pointing to, um, I have proceedings, so I'm happy to share the proceedings and you can get all the details of the, in the papers. So um, the motivation for electrical vehicles um, uh, is um, not so much, uh, it was, was very surprising to me that uh, you know, there is currently going to be uh, more electrical vehicles because the government says so, but um, actually uh, the reason truly is pushing is the incredible pollution that currently many cities are seeing. Beijing was put forward and we know that that's a, truly a problem. But what was actually surprising to me is that Paris currently 
uh, is having major pollution problems, and they actually introduce the same system, for example, than uh, Beijing has, that the odd license numbers are coming on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then sort of the even numbers, license plates are coming on the other days. So many of these cities are truly seeing um, um, uh, pollutions, and so electrical vehicles, or at least hybrid electrical, and, and in the long term, as I said, they talk about 2050, is truly about um, uh, electrical vehicles. And uh, various statistics have been put forward, uh, uh, and you can see here currently on the, uh, on the chart, actually, that at least until 2017, uh, the predictions are pretty solid. Of course, after that, people don't really know, but there is an increasing popularity of electrical vehicles, uh, um, and this is currently um, definitely North America, which is the blue one, then the green one, basically it's West Europe, but in Asia, Major. I mean, if you currently look at some of the Asian cities, especially in China, I visited a couple of cities, uh, pollution is an issue, and uh, electric vehicles seem to be one of the directions to uh, fight that. The other very interesting aspect that uh, I have seen, particularly at this conference, was um, many stakeholders. It's not just electrical vehicles. I actually first saw it's going to be electrical vehicle uh, manufacturers, you know, BMW and uh, Volkswagen and Mercedes and uh, Toyota and uh, Nissan and so on. Well, uh, I could not have been more wrong. I mean, there have been car manufacturers, and they have been sort of the center. Uh, and these were basically uh, manufacturers not only of the cars, but also of trucks. Electric, uh, electric trucks are currently becoming very popular to, uh, as a part of discussion. Electric buses, motorcycles, actually there were some really interesting exhibitions at the conference. You could actually see and sit and uh, touch uh, some of the electric vehicles, electric motor motorcycles, and of course electric trains are already there. But the other stakeholders actually that are currently very much interested in is energy providers. And one of the reasons is that basically you have to have electricity in order to run these vehicles. Uh, urban city planners, transport planners, um, currently, uh, where are you currently putting all the uh, sort of charging stations, for example, logistic planning, and the whole electrification of infrastructure, we will talk about that. There have been IT, uh, Cisco has been there, IBM has been there, uh, truly sort of the IT organization, IT infrastructure needs to be there, um, and uh, road infrastructure providers, um, and um, uh, furthermore, uh, several actually national policy makers, government officials, city officials, so that was really interesting. And I believe that to solve this whole issue, as we will see, and I hope I can convince you at the end, uh, you will need uh, this kind of uh, whole group of uh, stakeholders to solve this issue. Um, also, another very interesting aspect, especially from TCG point of view, as we are currently exploring actually electrical vehicles uh, as a very important appliance, if you want, um, uh, for, for power grid. Um, I was actually very curious who are currently some of the players who were actually there. Uh, so definitely from the car companies, Toyota and Ford had uh, several research initiatives. Uh, from the IT telecom, actually, I was very uh, pleasant surprise. Qualcomm currently is big time in wireless charging, Cisco, IBM. Uh, universities, there are several actually universities, particularly Ohio State and Clemson University, that have actually uh, major electrical vehicle transportation centers, uh, but also University of Michigan, of course, and um, other sort of universities in California. Um, big player actually in the uh, uh, United States in electrical vehicles and uh, the uh, power grid uh, as well as uh, IT infrastructure uh, is National Labs, uh, uh, Oak Ridge, uh, Ridge National Laboratory. And there were actually from uh, the European side, there were several people from transportation uh, uh, and um, cities uh, and then transportation service companies. So let me uh, now very briefly talk about uh, some of the challenges of the electrical vehicles that um, I see and um, have been discussed. So um, the big goal is actually electric uh, mobility beyond 2020. Uh, the goal is truly the eco-friendliness, but also safety. People are believing that these electric vehicles will be safe, will be comfortable, and will be efficient. 
But for that actually to achieve, and as I mentioned, they talk about 2050, you need electric vehicle charging. And there are currently three major uh, directions that electric charging is going. Uh, the charging stations, but then actually now as wireless charging is becoming more and more uh, affordable and efficient, um, static wireless charging and dynamic wireless charging are currently uh, truly being uh, experimented with and deployed. And I will talk about examples. What I was very surprised actually was uh, electrification of road infrastructure has been, uh, and Oak Ridge actually National Lab is very uh, active actually in uh, uh, really experimenting. I will put some numbers uh, out there. They actually uh, provide it. Um, in space of uh, electric vehicles, actually, um, I am not an expert, so I was just capturing some sort of bits and pieces, uh, trying to, again, tie it to my domain sort of on the power grid informatics. But it was battery, especially the size. Uh, the, largest, the larger the battery, the, the more expensive, actually, the car is, the weight, temperature, capacity, all. And then, actually, another sort of issue that was discussed with respect to cars and well was, was speed. Currently, when you go to an electric vehicle, usually it has one speed. When you go to Tesla uh, car, as two or so. But people have been uh, providing solutions toward two-speed, uh, optimal sort of two-gear type of uh, uh, electric vehicles. And actually, several solutions, particularly uh, some of the uh, companies were pushing towards three-speed uh, for trucks. That seems to be uh, uh, much more efficient. And then standards are definitely still a big challenge. So let me talk about uh, some, I think, interesting aspects about electric vehicle, uh, but charging stations. So as you know, in the United States, uh, through pro uh, President Obama initiative, there is a major push by 2020 to have a really large millions of uh, these hybrid uh, via electrical vehicles uh, on the road. But um, to actually uh, achieve this, you really need uh, uh, a large and sufficient number of uh, charging stations. Um, so um, uh, currently, uh, the anticipation that these uh, hybrid electrical vehicles will go down in their cost. Uh, so Volvo, for example, had some numbers. Actually, it's a Swedish car company that does electrical vehicles now. The revenue uh, will increase, and the cost of the cars will go down. Pike Research actually forecasted uh, uh, how many sort of uh, 1.5 million charging stations in the United States, 5.1 million uh, hybrid uh, vehicles in the United States. And Gartner actually predicts the cost going down by 37%. So the one car that was currently there uh, and uh, the charging stations are currently uh, prepared for it, that was sort of interesting for me in Europe, was the BMW i3 car. Uh, and some of the parameters were important, and they are important for the metadata that currently we will be capturing as uh, information infrastructure will grow around the electrical cars. Uh, what these electrical cars care about is uh, how many kilowatts they need in order to pass 100 kilometers. Um, how fast are they acceler uh, accelerating? So acceleration time from zero to 100 kilometers takes 7.2 seconds, right? And those are some of the parameters that they are selling them. They want to report the, to the IT infrastructure, uh, the number of speeds I already mentioned, and also number of miles per battery. If you have a full charge battery, how long does it take actually for you to get to a particular destination B? So some very interesting discussions were, so electrical charging stations are currently quite developed technology. They, people know how to do that. Um, but uh, the discussion was actually much more around the politics and uh, business aspects. Uh, so a couple of sort of issues, uh, who currently can place actually uh, these charging stations. And so in um, Brussels, for example, there was a, a delegation uh, from EU uh, was talking about how to fight currently um, third party problem pe people. Uh, on public land, actually, in the Brussels, uh, um, uh, the, only the electric companies, the utilities, can install charging stations. And then actually these particular electric companies, the power companies, can actually see who currently how much charges. And they actually send you a bill. Car owner will get the bill, how much electricity you have been charging. 
Well, uh, parking companies on public land, so the public uh, parking spaces, uh, they should only then charge you for a uh, uh, parking space. But very often, actually, they will charge you also for the electricity. So actually, you are double paying. Because you get the bill from the parking companies and you get the bill from the electric companies. So um, they seem to start to have this kind of problems. Uh, and um, the particular gentleman basically was claiming that this is quite widespread. So on private land currently, for example, in Europe, a uh, third party, um, and that might be car manufacturer, would install uh, the charging stations. So. Um, uh, another sort of really big issue currently becomes, and these are currently some very interesting optimization problems for us as maybe computing computer scientists, is um, uh, there is currently anticipated that in some places you might have more uh, hybrid cars than charging stations. So the problem currently is when you uh, basically get to a mall and you say, oh, my battery just lasted for that particular time, um, but charging station is not available. Do you start to introduce reservation system? How do you plan how many charging stations do you install at your mall, um, particularly in public places? Uh, what will happen to other drivers that currently don't get access to the charging station? Um, and there currently the discussion was, would actually the new approach, and that's the inductive wireless charging, be a more efficient uh, solution because you could actually uh, install much more inductive charging uh, pads uh, in parking lots uh, than actually just a charging station. So these were questions, I don't have answers, but I just want to really motivate actually people uh, to start uh, thinking about this. So wireless uh, charging uh, was very much discussed, and uh, the charging, uh, um, wireless charging was divided into two groups. One was the static uh, uh, wireless charging, and the other one was dynamic wireless charging. The static wireless charging is you basically park somewhere over a charging device, and then basically you have in your car a coil, and then basically you set up sort of electromagnetic field, and uh, the, the coil in the road, in the parking spot, basically, and your coil in the car basically are exchanging and the electricity, basically, the energy gets transferred to your car. Uh, of course, that particular pad uh, that uh, currently would be um, on the, I'm not sure currently if I can move the mouse, but I wanted to sort of to show this is currently the pad, uh, could be on, in, on, the, on the parking lot, uh, or currently you could uh, have it also in your home, uh, but basically that gets connected to a uh, electricity source. So this is currently a quite uh, uh, established uh, uh, solution, and uh, many uh, uh, places already have that. I already, I think, when I gave in summer school a presentation, I mentioned uh, Boston Logan Airport actually does uh, static wireless charging for uh, buses already. And you can see currently here, uh, this is sort of another uh, interesting uh, solution. Um, so um, wireless charging is very old technology. Tesla actually introduced in 1908. Uh, but uh, for many years, actually, the wireless charging was not as um, effective. Uh, there was weak coupling factor. Uh, there was a huge losses. And currently, actually, the technology is starting to be there where you are starting to actually see uh, 80 to 90 percent, 95 percent efficiency between actually the charging pad and your car coiler. Uh, if you are currently sort of 10 to 40 centimeters distance. Uh, so currently uh, what these car manufacturers are fighting with, and I think they're also planners of the city, is uh, uh, people are concerned about the safety. Um, you know, electric power gets transferred through the air. You know, is it currently safe if I'm currently over that particular charging pad? And um, uh, Oak Ridge National is doing some experiments, you know, because it's very different currently when you have your uh, laptop or your uh, iPod uh, basically wirelessly charged, right? Those are microwatts. Uh, the moment currently you put a car in there, uh, suddenly you have kilowatts that are currently being transferred as a transfer. So, um, so that's a currently one issue. 
um, no answers. Um, but uh, another sort of very interesting debate was actually, was you have a long charging. So this particular static uh, uh, approach, you have to sort of basically stay there over a couple of um, either minutes or hour uh, to actually do that. So uh, basically there was a discussion to start basically developing around the charging station malls or some interest points so that people actually want to stay there, right? Uh, and and um, uh, sort of uh, not be bored when they are charging. So the third uh, dimension that currently is very much developed and uh, very much discussed and being currently developed and tested is the dynamic wireless charging, where currently you are actually charging as you are driving. And so here, uh, currently, this particular technology is starting to mature. Um, Oak Ridge National Lab currently has a major uh, experiment uh, with uh, Evatran Eva com uh, company. Uh, there is with the Clemson University, which has a major uh, center on electric uh, uh, automotive research, in particular electric cars and Toyota company. And they are building actually uh, this car that currently can do dynamic uh, wireless charging. Um, interestingly is they are actually currently anticipating as you currently are driving, uh, uh, basically doing uh, charging at 6.6 .6 kilowatts uh, wireless transfer and the efficiency is getting uh, quite good. He was advertising uh, the, the ORNR researcher was 85% efficiency and uh, they currently completed the integration and also vehicle integ uh, integration. There are also other projects that are currently already having dynamic charging uh, uh, in the electrical vehicles. Uh, there is a fabric project uh, in Italy and Greece that currently already has a, a test track, uh, uh, test bed, uh, 200 meters test track, and basically the coils are 20 meters long, and basically they can charge uh, at the level of 20 kilowatts uh, for, for those cars. And of course, France uh, partnering Qualcomm and Vedacom apparently they also have a test bed uh, uh, in this space. So a couple of uh, major, I think, challenges were mentioned. Uh, uh, so one important issue is how long these particular coils are in your road, right? Um, if you have very short coil, for example, two meter coil of uh, 20 kilowatts, uh, it was advertised you will basically have to go to actually do any meaningful charging at 36 kilometers per hour, which is maybe 20 miles an hour sort of low per speed. Um, so, you know, where is this particular applicable, right? That might not be applicable on a highway. This is applicable somewhere maybe in the city. Um, uh, if uh, one goes at higher speeds, like 108 kilometers, uh, and you have short coils, you have a very, very short uh, charging time, right? So that's currently uh, a major issue. So people are currently uh, encouraged, actually, to do various simulation studies um, that uh, uh, to really sort of try to analyze uh, different city situations. So the fabric project, for example, was uh, advertising if you have 10 EVs per kilometer per lane over an hour, uh, and overall you have 500 uh, sort of vehicles with capacity maximum number of vehicles you can push into a lane, 30, uh, uh, then uh, basically what is the load demand? Two to eight megawatts of load demand. And uh, one thing that they actually have shown, uh, at, at least at this particular uh, very sort of uh, simple simulation was an incredible uh, change in load. And so they actually turned to the uh, power grid companies and, and basically said, well, how are you going to be dealing with this particular very variable load? Uh, you have, you, we truly need somehow load shaping or load shaving, um, uh, particularly currently if we uh, put uh, uh, some uh, electric sources close to the roads, uh, uh, how are these going to be uh, uh, 
particularly organized and planned for average load, for peak load, um, and so on. So there were basically very interesting uh, ideas thrown out. For example, that along the roads, you would have solar panels. And uh, the solar panels would then actually provide electricity for the coils in the road. So that when you basically are coming, you sort of charge, but these coils basically will have electric, uh, electric source. Now, the question currently is, uh, um, you know, how, how do you plan this particular uh, solar panel for average load and so on? Um, so that's currently a, a big sort of discussion. Uh, further challenges for the violent, dynamic wireless charging was communication latency as you currently, all of these coils will have sensors. Um, it's all sort of IT uh, connected uh, infrastructure, it's a cyber physical system. And so how can you currently get information out of them, coordinate all the information um, and so on. So infrastructure issues for power grid distribution were discussed. So overall, dynamic wireless charging is the theme of the day uh, because currently people do feel that if dynamic wireless charging in the roads would have that kind of capabilities, your vehicles will have smaller batteries. And therefore, your vehicles would be cheaper, right? Um, you will have extended driving range. Right? You don't have to worry about that. That's currently my battery of 25 kilowatts basically get me just from here to school. And in school, if there is no charging station, how do I get back? So um, extended battery life, energy efficiency, people talk about comfort. User was a big, big discussion point. Uh, increased mobility and no visual pollution. The really big, big cons in this particular case is, is uh, uh, the expensive infrastructure. So let me talk about infrastructure. Electrification of road infrastructure. As you know, uh, trains currently are already electrified, but currently the discussion is truly about trucks, buses, and our pass passenger roads. So uh, Oak Ridge National Lab currently has some very interesting project, and I think if we move into this particular, at least one arm of the research in this direction, we should definitely partner with them. Um, uh, because they are conducting dynamic roadway projection uh, projects. So they, they are currently estimating cost and impact of electric roadways. Um, and um, uh, so they currently are uh, running in Atlanta an interesting experiment where they estimated cost and impact of electrified road that given you are having a vehicle at 40 miles per hour and you have charging pads in the roads, these coils, uh, with 11 kilowatts for small vehicles to keep them charged. The current estimate of the cost of the Project Atlanta is that you need to, in order to get 25 to 30 kilowatts charging of these cars, and you have approximately 30% line coverage, that you have to basically plan $2.1 million per one mile per lane. Okay. And he had some other sort of uh, uh, $3.5 million uh, as he currently as, and, uh, anticipates higher uh, line uh, coverage. Uh, he said at this point it's prohibitive, um, particularly for these sort of smaller uh, vehicles. So currently, actually, uh, the Oak Ridge uh, uh, National Lab uh, researchers actually were much more uh, predicting that um, uh, we are going to see the hybrid. Uh, maybe we will see the um, uh, charging stations and we will see the uh, static wireless stations with um, uh, some uh, um, uh, business cases being built towards 2050. Uh, for dynamic wireless charging. And the particular regions that they are currently going to build roads, um, particularly for buses, uh, is in LA, Long Beach, uh, San Francisco, Oakland, San Diego area, and Atlanta. And the baseline basically currently is around 
uh, delivering 100 kilowatts and then 30 kilowatts for the wireless uh, sort of uh, charging, dynamic wireless charging. So, and buses are currently meant first to go, and they are thinking that by 2025 they should have, because of the buses going very stable routes, they are thinking that they can start to electrify a particular lane. In many cities already, buses have their separate lanes, especially in big cities. So they think that that might be sort of feasible, uh, especially if they can start to show decrease of the cost and uh, decrease of the pollution. So currently, some of the really major challenges, cost of the dynamic wireless charging uh, on the vehicle. Um, what's the size of the battery? Uh, if I currently have a wireless charging, uh, they really would like to go to a smaller battery, and I will talk about battery. How do you pay for the electrification? Uh, currently, if you are thinking about, um, uh, about gas, right? there is the gasoline taxes. So the question was discussed, do we have a power grid, uh, sort of electricity taxes to pay for the electrification? Uh, it's not quite clear. Do we have toll roads, right? So a lot of sort of discussion was, and as I mentioned, the case study currently has been already identified uh, as the I-75 South Atlanta. Uh, another very interesting uh, problem, this was actually a researcher from KTH, um, Sweden was talking about electrification is nice and dandy, but basically if it starts to rain and you have a wet roads, what happens? And he showed basically that with the current material, how we build roads, actually uh, then there is a water, snow, sand, ice. He showed incredible losses of uh, power transfer. So um, he basically made a very sort of clear statement, we need different materials for these electrified uh, uh, roads uh, to minimize the loss, even in wet conditions. So um, another really important problem, he was sort of a civil engineer, he pointed out, um, well, um, currently you have cracks in the road, you have rooting problems, right? So you're currently here on the uh, you know, cracks in the, in the road, yeah. Um, he said that can have an impact on uh, this uh, energy transfer. And so um, it's not clear, uh, you know, how, how good then the losses, uh, uh, the, how, how bad the losses are. And so he actually was arguing for a device to test roads for structural integrity. In the space of, um, uh, of uh, batteries, um, an interesting discussion was uh, led uh, that if we have charging stations, we do need large batteries because the charging stations are not going to be installed you know, every five meters. Uh, and so uh, the cars are going to be more expensive. So the argument for these dynamic charging pads is that um, they will be installed uh, on uh, you know, maybe every maybe 20 meters or 10 meters on your road. And so basically you can really have a much smaller battery. And actually what was very, very surprising to me, remember, currently the battery is aimed for 25 kilowatts. They are aiming, the manufacturers were claiming 1.6 kilowatt batteries in your car. That's nice and light, right? So the cars would be much cheaper, he argued, and much better. Um, but um, you really then need the electrifications of those roads. Um, also, uh, if um, uh, th this particular correlation between the dynamic wireless charging and the battery was uh, uh, brought up in terms of spacement of these coils, that they have to be close to each other, uh, we will need some kind of sensors. The, the current problem is, again, waste of electricity for the power grid. Uh, for example, do you let all the uh, coils on? Of course not, right? There is the problem of people being scared that you get electrified. So what currently um, uh, is being discussed is that basically these coils in these roads will have sensors. And these sensors actually are going to create a sensor network. And then as the car will come, basically, the first sensor will inform the next sensors. And then the next coil basically uh, electrifies, I mean, basically energizes. And then the next uh, coil energizes, and so on. So with sensors, one starts with the first coil, and the next basically fires up dynamically. And once you basically pass down, basically the coil goes off. 
So energy savings, uh, since uh, coins will not be needed, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of needed. So there is, again, um, the whole issue of uh, signals, uh, sort of IT issues, uh, sensor networks, uh, and uh, this uh, electric uh, uh, intercorrelation. Uh, another very big issue is cost of battery, and I already mentioned that um, that uh, if you currently are looking at uh, $250 per kilowatt uh, hour, um, so and this is currently not likely to happen uh, by 2020. So um, uh, currently the prices are going down, but um, not fast enough. Actually, uh, many several of the speakers have uh, admitted. Uh, another very interesting problem, actually, and this is again currently also uh, impacts optimization problems that actually we are working also, also in, in, in computing, is uh, optimization of energy and thermal management. Uh, uh, cars are currently incredibly complex cyber-physical systems. Uh, they have the major sort of battery electricity motor uh, type of uh, circuit, but then there are all kinds of other sort of systems, auxiliary system, electric system. Uh, they are emitting um, uh, sort of heat and so on, and that all has to be basically coordinated and integrated properly uh, so that one can actually increase the driving range. Um, the one interesting aspect that I thought, the same way as in TCG, when we started to look at uh, uh, the various uh, uh, transmission uh, networks, we looked at some of the uh, various standards. Uh, currently, the standard committee is far in terms of uh, wireless charging, the conductive sort of inductive charging systems. Um, they are currently already are talking about uh, even integrations of the electric vehicles with the RFID, with the communication, the DSRC communication channels to actually enable services like vehicle navigation, um, placement of electric charging is being at least mentioned. Um, and uh, vehicle diagnostics uh, and payment solutions. So um, uh, in that particular space, some of the standards start to provide some uh, directions, which was really good to see. Also currently the computing and communication, uh, computing uh, ISO um, uh, type of group and the IC are developing joint standards to, do, to go towards uh, uh, interoperability and safety requirements. One thing that I actually asked, and uh, we have sort of had a discussion, is if there is any effort, since these are such complex cyber physical systems, if there is any discussion on uh, cyber attacks, on uh, security, on authentication, and the answer is not yet, uh, but they are currently starting uh, in this domain. So um, in the space of uh, challenges of the electric vehicle, because it's the cost, uh, number of is going up, charging technologies must improve, weight batteries must go down, cost of electrification, standardization. There were two other major issues discussed, and that was automated vehicle driving and also connected vehicles um, to actually see how currently IT and power grid can uh, deal with if uh, uh, cars get basically connected, they help each other uh, in terms of uh, power charging. So um, in terms of uh, power grid informatics, I first thought that I will define the term um, uh, as uh, usually power informatics gets defined, uh, but it's basically a study um, uh, and uh, about structural algorithms, behavior, interaction of power grid systems, and uh, artificial cyber systems within to, to basically store, process, access, and communicate information. And uh, this currently very well sort of fits in into this whole space around the electric vehicles. And of course, as we want trustworthy uh, power informatics, we also need to have the uh, processing of the information uh, in real time, uh, reliable, secure, and privately. So um, the components currently that have been uh, very much uh, uh, in discussion in terms of IT extension and sensory extension is the roads, uh, major sensors uh, in the road, but also then uh, along the roads, basically. It's not only the energy uh, sources, uh, generations, but also various um, 
wireless access points, processing points, and so on. So the roadside units are currently uh, very well sort of uh, uh, accepted uh, as a, a part of the uh, road uh, infrastructure. In the electric vehicle cars, um, uh, people talk about uh, monitors uh, like the smart meters that currently are going to monitor almost like a black box, monitor charging levels, usage levels, uh, and of course then all the other uh, type of functions. And power grid utilities, we know those, uh, they basically currently have all the IT cloud computing storage uh, to store and process all the sensor information. So we will actually have to get out the, the information, the sensor information out of those cards, out of those roads, um, into these utilities to uh, actually process it. Uh, and of course, there are also, uh, um, as uh, we know, uh, many, many third party services that currently want to actually fit into that, to actually uh, be the IT providers. SAP was there. Uh, they have been very much positioning themselves almost like the Siebel, uh, Siebel Systems. Uh, uh, in the past, but SAP is a similar company, it was an office company, now they are positioning themselves as the uh, go-to between power grid uh, utility companies and the car companies. So a uh, couple of very interesting uh, challenges were discussed in terms of uh, processing. Um, uh, to provide actually IT services uh, um, uh, for the electric vehicles, um, algorithms uh, to uh, provide accurate range estimations, to provide navigations, uh, to provide assignments of charging stations. I mentioned the reservation capabilities of uh, charging stations, uh, reservation uh, planning, actually algorithms for when particular uh, buses uh, could actually use static wireless charging stations. Uh, and as I say, placement of charging station, particularly the city planners have been uh, asking actually for algorithms uh, when they currently provide certain parameters, how to where to pl place charging pads and charging stations. I will talk about a bit more. Um, seamless integration uh, of the information. Currently, actually, if you look at, uh, and we know it from other domains, power grid, uh, then uh, electrical vehicles, and road infrastructure, everybody has different representations of information. Um, I just looked at some of these uh, uh, standards, and they are very different than, uh, for example, what we currently are uh, doing uh, in, uh, in power grid. So I'm currently wondering as well, uh, how do we currently, again, uh, you, reconcile the different information representations, different communication technologies, uh, different um, uh, digital and energy storage capabilities. And of course, uh, as you are currently have a uh, electric mobility, um, you will see very different security and privacy uh, capabilities and demands. So from the Big picture point of it, it's going to be a big data problem um, because uh, people want to do cost benefit analysis. They want to do the whole environmental life cycle assessment. And so in the case of big data, we will have the volume, we will have the velocity, we will have the variety, we will have the velocity, we will have the visualization problems, all of the problems of big Vs for, for big data in this particular space. And they have been brought forward uh, and also at this conference. Um, in case of uh, charging concepts, uh, very much real time is required. Um, vehicle authorization, as you are currently um, basically charging, it's not quite clear, you need to, who is currently charging, you know, how are you going to get built? So they do want vehicle authorization, authentication, charging profile negotiation. How much can you charge? Where you can charge and so on. Um, monitoring of power transfer uh, while uh, the electrical vehicle is over the pads, billing payment, uh, and of course all the coordination uh, of the wireless, dynamic wireless charging hardware with the all information controlled and transmission. Power management um, algorithms have been very much asked for um, uh, because currently I think people have a very much sort of understanding in terms of hard real time, the, the overall electric uh, uh, mechanisms of uh, driving. 
but there are many auxiliary systems. Uh, there is auxiliary electrific uh, electrified systems, air supply, power steering, entertainment system. So there are multiple physical systems in the car um, that currently need to be coordinated. And so there was some there was one solution, one sort of interesting paper on game theory approach to uh, sort of look at uh, energy suppliers, which basically would be your engine, your battery, your electric motor, and then of course the energy consumers inside of your uh, particular vehicle would be all the auxiliary systems, right? The air supplier, the uh, entertainment. And uh, they actually tried to argue uh, that game theory guidance decisions uh, um, uh, should be taken uh, into account as you are activating and deactivating um, these auxiliary systems. So um, in terms of access, uh, uh, the major challenge uh, for the information was make the uh, power grid information available with also high integrity uh, because basically all of these vehicles will absolutely require power service and continuity, flexibility, extensibility, uh, monitoring of demand growth. Basically, this, this population over the lane, right? If you are thinking about dynamic uh, charging, right? Um, Currently, if you are designing your, uh, your solar cells next to the road based on average load, right, then you better have some kind of ele uh, energy storage next to, the, uh, next to the road so that if you have a peak demand, you can actually serve it. But, or maybe have other sort of capability that if you have a peak uh, load uh, demand. So electrical efficiency, uh, power quality. Uh, so this power fluctuation was brought up many times and they can actually fluctuate in megawatt uh, spaces. So uh, one solution that uh, I thought was interesting, as I said, uh, was discussed uh, if you have a connected car. So they currently are actually thinking, for example, you have uh, families of people uh, in the cars. They could platoon their vehicles and uh, they could actually help each other in case of peak load demand. Uh, but that, of course, requires coordination among the particular uh, vehicles. Um, also, if you do platooning uh, and connected vehicles, electrical vehicles, it requires sort of adequate line, lane design. Um, and as I said, uh, the energy storage and traffic control would help. So, um, we are, uh, so in my group, actually, I just wanted very briefly to say we are currently working uh, in TCPG on vehicle-to-grid communication, particularly real-time authentication, uh, so that currently, as you are, particularly for the dynamic wireless driving charging, um, and several other people also here are working on location uh, privacy. So I think uh, as you are currently driving, you need to also understand how are you currently doing the roaming service models. So another very interesting sort of issues. Uh, uh, if, for example, an EV currently subscribes to a utility, makes monthly payment, and the utility manages the subscribing electrical vehicles uh, uh, and builds the electrical vehicle uh, monthly. Uh, so actually, you are subscribing to the pad owner, that was sort of one model that we have been here uh, investigating. And then the pad owner actually installs the charging pads, provides the dynamic charging service, and then may receive energy uh, from some other sort of utility. Uh, but then actually, um, if you have this kind of model, you can also do very uh, clear sort of uh, uh, authentication and key distribution because you can actually overnight distribute keys. And as an electric car gets onto the road, then it gets basically a shared key and then the shared key is basically available on each of the coils to actually authenticate and get the right actually to get uh, power transfer. So we currently um, are investigating in, sort of in the TCPG here uh, this particular problem. And um, I also mentioned the placement of uh, the charging pads and charging um, stations. So this is currently another uh, problem that also TCPG is starting to investigate. Um, usually it's modeled as a graph problem um, in the power grid sort of informatics. And again, it's important currently that you uh, label what is currently important for you. For example, for a city planner, if it's the amount of um, 
kilometers uh, that currently you have to go from uh, point A to point B, and what is the traffic flow. As I mentioned, the occupancy on the particular uh, flow uh, on, on the road is important. And the question then is uh, find the optimal location for charging stations uh, and uh, charging pads. Uh, and constraint usually will be for the city how much money you have to actually put uh, for charging stations or charging uh, pads. They are going to be expensive. And so one possible sort of uh, solution could be you pick just basically the most busiest streets uh, of electrical cars you basically put the charging pad and then basically make the rest of the nodes candidates for uh, the charging station. And uh, uh, particularly if you have multiple of those, you have to then run, we have another algorithms to actually uh, decide based on which particular charging station is the best one. But as I said, I didn't really want to uh, go into details of these algorithms. I wanted much more concentrate on the challenges of uh, this particular whole space because there's just very, very rich space of problems for us, I think, uh, in computer science, in uh, power grid engineering, and uh, electrical engineering, basically, to work on. So uh, the plans for 2050 uh, is uh, truly to get the dynamic wireless charging in, uh, develop new materials, heterogeneity. That was actually uh, several keynote speakers, basically, particularly from the car companies and uh, other companies, basically, have been talking about this. Um, but we are truly dealing with very complex cyber physical systems, and so the call for uh, really almost uh, uh, help uh, that this particular problem is going to be solved if uh, computing and IT and uh, power grid and transportation and uh, car manufacturers are coming together because you have a big data problem, you have information representation, integration problems, security problems, uh, information reachability problem because you have a mobility you have uh, tremendous uh, problems with losses, right? Uh, heterogeneous communication. And, and of course, I haven't even talked about uh, there is a whole integrated social vehicle and road network problems. You, you are really seeing um, convolution of very, very different networks. I haven't talked about people, but um, that basically drives as well a lot of problems that we are interested in. That concludes my presentation. This is on. Hi, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Clara. A very informative talk. Uh, one, one question I have is uh, many of the problems that you raised seem to be easier for vehicles that follow a fixed routes, like buses and so on. Does it, does it make sense to, to separate the problem and uh, address maybe what might be easier solutions for trains and buses, for example, where you know where they're going to be and, and you can install the, all the various infrastructure? And it's, it would seem to be an easier optimization problem, raise fewer privacy issues and so forth. And I'm, I'm not saying ignore the vehicle problem, but it, maybe separate them out. And that they seem to be different problems to me. <clears throat> Yes, uh, and uh, this was actually, when I mentioned the simulation, right, uh, that was actually mentioned that currently when uh, people are simulating, they are simulating this particular uh, sort of single lane type of uh, problems. And the call was there, please start to look for also much more complex scenarios. Uh, that uh, they're basically, for example, uh, there was a discussion, well, if I do have two lanes, right, switching lanes, for example, you know, what happens? Uh, uh, how do you keep state that you have currently switched lanes, right? Um, at, at what boundaries currently you are uh, sort of switching? Are you switching middle of the charging and so on? So. Um, uh, particularly, uh, this, this two-lane problems has been uh, discussed uh, in one of the panels that um, was um, asked, basically, the community should start looking at that. But I agree very much uh, that um, currently also uh, a lot of um, problems that are simulated and are considered are very uniform distributed, right? Uh, things are uh, nicely spaced out, right? Uh, which is not happening, right? So really uh, shaking up things, right? Um, get, getting much more randomness because that's actually how people behave. 
Um, on the other hand, uh, there was sort of an interesting aspect that if, there, if it's a matter of efficiency uh, and you can give people guidance, the drivers, you can give a guidance that people seem to follow, right? So that was actually an interesting concept that um, I'm not sure currently if people have done studies, you know, how much you can take some kind of predictability or guidance. And that actually meant, uh, led also to the discussion of the automated driving. I haven't talked about automated driving, but this was a big discussion. Uh, that, uh, and that has nothing to do with electrical vehicles. Uh, but basically, they feel that electrical vehicles and automated driving might be an interesting combination, because then you can actually uh, control, right? When are you changing lanes? How, are you, how far are you, uh, you know, apart from each other? So there are many, many different problems, and I think as a community, we will have to go one by one. Hi. Th thanks, Clara. Um, Phil Crane, University of Illinois. I guess I should admit that uh, this year I'm, I'm the incoming chair of the IEEE Transportation Electrification Community, which was the sponsor of the uh, conference you just attended. That's wonderful. Um, I want to second your point that the cyber physical systems and integration are, are absolutely the fundamental challenges. You know, the challenges, I don't want to trivialize them, but we know how to make powerful electric vehicles. We, we frankly know how to do wireless charging. We know how to do uh, all of the specific technological pieces, but doing the system level integration and the scale up is absolutely the biggest barrier. Um, and part of, the, part of the challenge behind that actually is getting perspective. So if you indulge me for a few moments, I want to give you three examples. Uh, one of them you mentioned was the $2.8 million per mile. Yes. Well, if you ask the city of Champaign, how much does it cost to replace a lane of pavement on Green Street for one mile, the number you get will be more than that. So the, the question of what is the true incremental cost, and if we have these devices in hand, you know, what, what is the extra as we go through sort of conventional maintenance cycles? Uh, you get a much different answer. So the, the whole idea of how do you integrate all these things together becomes really challenging. The second one, uh, you, you had a slide, I think it was probably about slide number eight, um, where you showed one of the um, charging stations. I, I'm, Maybe I'll make you go back there. I don't know. Um, yeah, there you go, slide nine. Uh, so you see at the top there um, a, a vehicle charging station, uh, and there's a lot of comment about the infrastructure and the cost of that. Now, granted, we're indoors, but I look around the room, and I see lots of charging infrastructure, and some of you are using it, by the way, right now for laptops. Uh, there's no particular reason why every parking space in any parking garage in the United States couldn't have an outlet. And this is not expensive. Okay. Uh, we can find ways to make it expensive, and there's some beautiful examples right there, uh, or we can find ways to make it cheap. Um, and, and somehow the trade-offs aren't, aren't quite there yet. Right. Um, and I, I think the other thing, though, that I will emphasize is, is the idea of trying to optimize within a vehicle and the, the energy usage, you know, those challenges you, you raised yeah. are, are very substantial because there's a variety of things. And when you go to these new technologies, you know, how do you keep the windscreen clear? Uh, how do you uh, make the, the driving experience uh, readily available? But, of course, the car itself has storage on it, so you have this time buffer that you can always work with that helps so much. I was just absolutely amazed uh, how complex these systems can become. I mean, even here, this particular second picture, right? It's on top of it's already solar cells, right? That basically currently is charging uh, the pads that are currently in their parking lot, right? And then all the connectivity among and uh, sort of the IT aspect about around that as well. So um, anyway, I, I very much agree. That. Thank you for all the comments. Yeah, very thanks good. for your talk. Thanks. So, Clara, when I when I was growing up, um, our milk was delivered by electric truck. Yes. And the reasons for it were pollution and for inexpensiveness. Um, now, you know, there are lots and lots of services. I recently sort of was looking at the, the uh, Chicago delivery problem and how much pollution is caused and, con right. and congestion is caused by delivery within the city 
of Chicago. Um, just immense problems. But it seems like there would be a very good economic reason to actually remove a lot of the gas-powered delivery vehicles in Chicago and replace them with this, this type of technology. And I suspect that's going to be true of all the big cities. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I and the infrastructure so. for this wouldn't be that difficult to put in. And compared, looking at what your numbers are and comparing that with uh, Edinburgh's implementation of a tram, which takes people from Edinburgh City out to the airport, this would be a lot easier to implement and yeah. a lot cheaper um, and have a lot less impact on, on the traffic flows and everything else. Yeah. So this may be um, a really sort of short term, but it may very, very quickly happen that the, the sort of goods delivery systems, transportation systems could be automated with this type of technology very quickly. Right. The other thing as I was looking at this, it begs the question, do we have all the other control systems for cars um, that would work with the electrical supply? In other words, are, are we going to move to a, a car by wire, drive by wire um, system? And do we have all the technologies to be able to do that? Because that would really sort of uh, almost be a, a follow on from requiring electric vehicles, you know, you, you could automate everything, in particular driving and braking systems. And I'm not sure some of that, that uh, research is complete, and I'm, I'm sure that has lots of security and safety issues right, yeah. that would be uh, very I interesting. I don't know. I mean, uh, currently, actually, one sort of other interesting aspect was also uh, discussed, uh, this, this whole wireless infrastructure. It's not only just the wireless power charging, but then also wireless communication, but also the impact of the electromagnetic fields, right, on the wireless in communication, for example. Uh, that was, um, uh, there was sort of one uh, communication uh, talk actually about that. Um, so, it um, uh, will be interesting. I, I'm actually currently very much following, you know, at what particular frequency are we currently communicating the IT information versus at basically how currently the electric uh, sort of development happens. Are there some kind of um, impacts uh, on, on the information quality, right, that we are currently. But um, uh, at the higher level, right, it would be all software, right, if you uh, think about that, right? So the roadside units and you basically just communicate road services and so on. The cars are, I mean, somebody was at the talk uh, saying by 2025 they are really thinking about very smart electrical vehicle uh, and it's basically a running computer. So um, it's probably now already, but um, they are further uh, aiming for. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, so uh, just to, to wrap up, uh, once again, let's thank the speaker for a very uh, wide-ranging and informative talk. Thank you. And uh, uh, next month we will have the, uh, the, the public seminar will be given by Ed Van Hoos. Ed Van Hoos was a... Uh, formerly the IT director for the Association of Illinois Electric Cooperatives, and now he has joined a, a particular cooperative. Uh, electric cooperatives have a large geographical footprint, even though they don't serve the most customers, but in the U.S. they have the, the largest geographical footprints, and in particular like a, a lot of the uh, rural areas in the state of Illinois and in general. So they have a interesting uh, IT and IT security problems and we've helped the uh, Association of Illinois Electric Cooperatives and Ed has been a good friend over the years so we look forward to that talk uh, but w once again thank you Clara and uh, uh, good good topic for the future to uh, to keep thinking about it seems like we're in at a, at a very good stage on this uh, research area <laughs>